वेलकम टू लर्न इट नाउ विल बी स्टार्टिंग अवर टॉपिक वन ऑफ चैप्टर टू विच इज़ नॉन एज सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स विच इज़ ए पार्ट ऑफ क्लास ट्वेल्थ बायोलॉजी सो लेट स्टार्ट विद द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ दिस चैप्टर इन द प्रीवियस चैप्टर वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अ डिफरेंट मोड्स ऑफ रिप्रोडक्शन इन विच वी हैव लर्न अबाउट द सेक्शुअल एंड असेक्शुअल मोड ऑफ रिप्रोडक्शन नाउ विल बी मूविंग फर्दर विद द प्लांट रिप्रोडक्शन पार्ट नाउ वाई डज द रिप्रोडक्शन इज इम्पॉर्टेंट इज दैट इट एंश्योर्स द कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ द स्पीशीज फ्रॉम वन जनरेशन टू अनादर जनरेशन एज द ओल्डर इंडिविजुअल अंडर गो सेनेसेंस एंड अल्टीमेटली डाई सो द रिप्रोडक्शन इज एंश्योर फॉर मेकिंग द कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ द स्पीशीज फ्रॉम वन जनरेशन टू अनादर now in this chapter the flowering plants will show sexual mode of reproduction and always have a complex reproductive unit which is the male reproductive or unit and the female reproductive unit with the accessory structures which will help them in the mode of sexual reproduction now a flower is only a modified stem which helps in these kind of reproductive stages and will act as the reproductive organ and produces two things the female produces ova and the male will germinate into pollen grains so before moving let us discuss what are the different parts of the flower i'll just give you about the angiospermic flower me which means the plants which are having flowers are known as angiospermic flowers now basically there are four types or four parts dividing a flower the first is kylex which is also known as sepals the second is corolla which is known as petals the third one is androecium which is also called as male reproductive organ which consists of stamens the last point is gynoecium which composed of ovary style and stigma so you can see it in the diagram all the things i hope many of you have seen a china rose which contains all the important accessory parts of angiospermic flower it also contains kylex corolla androecium and gynoecium in a one now in the next topic what we will be discussing is these all parts will help a flower to develop into a seeds or a fruit but it will take three portions or it is divided into three parts the sexual reproduction in these kinds of flowering parts plants has been divided into three parts the first is the pre fertilization the second is double fertilization and the third is the post fertilization so before verify you that these topics are bigger in sizes and these all topics will not be completed in a single video so we'll be taking multiple videos to understand these kind of different and difficult topics in this topic we'll basically be taking only the first portion which is the pollen grain formation everything about pollen grains will be taken will will be will be talking about here the second in the next video we can take the embryo sac formation pollination and pollen pistil interaction in the upcoming videos so we'll start with the first topic which is pre fertilization structures and events and in this the first topic will be the pollen grains formations so let's start with the main topic of pollen grain formation and this pollen grain is formed inside the male reproductive unit called as stamen now as you can see it from the structure the stamen structure has been divided basically into two parts the upper one is known as anther and the lower one is known as filament and as you can see a transverse section of anther in which it is bilobed structure bilobed means two lobe which has been divided into four parts which is containing pollen sacs and these pollen sac will contain pollen grains these pollen sacs are also called as microsporangia each pollen sac contains number of pollen grains and the four, four pollen sacs lie in the four different corner of an anther now what do you mean by dithecious anther is an anther that contains two lobes which means two parts that are joined together by a non sporangious tissue called as the connective tissue which means it has four structure but basically it is called as dithecious anther because it is bilobed which means it is two lobed but divided into four parts the anther wall is made up of four layers of cells which we will be talking in the next and the anther divide by the slits to liberate to give out the pollen grains into the 
different mediums let us understand the ts or the transfer section of anther on the left side we can see a bilobed structure of an anther in which we can see middle layer tapetum epidermis endothecium which are the walls or the outer coverings of this anther and in between we can say is porangius cells which help in the formation of spores and ultimately these spores will help in the development of pollen grains so in the right side we can see a detailed structure of what a wall look like of an anther the outermost is known as epidermis the inner portion is known as endothecium the middle layer is known as middle layer and the innermost layer is known as tapetum which is made up of a nutritious material which we'll be talking in the further video and in inside there will be sporogenous cells which is also known as microspore or the mother cell which helps in the formation of pollen grains so let us move to a topic which is known as anther development anther development start is it starts with so homogeneous meristematic cells which has been surrounded by epidermis and these kind of development will form a four layer archaeosporial cells which are differentiated into different parts now what do you mean by archaeosporial cells is they are the primitive cells they are the old cells that form cells from which spores will be developed that's why it is called as archaeosporial cells further this archaeosporial cells will divide into two types the first will be known as primary parietal cells and the second will be known as primary sporogenous cells the parietal cells will divide ultimately into different forms of anther walls and sporogenous cells will divide and form small microspores or pollen mother cells which is also known as pmc and as we have learned about the tapetum which is the innermost layer which is in touch with pmc which is pollen mother cells will form the last layer which is known as tapetum where the pollen will develop now what is the function of the tapetum is it is a tissue present within the anther that provides nutrition basically for the growing spores so that they can grow further the layer below the epidermis forms the endothecium and the different layers will come one after another so now let us move to the next topic of different layers of anther so from the right side we can see a diagram in which there is different kinds of layer we will starting from the first which is epidermis the second is endothecium then middle layer then will be ending it with tapetum which covers the microspore or the mother cell now what is the function of the epidermis is it is made up of single layer of cell and it helps in the protection of this is spores the second is endo endothecium endothecium cell has cellulose thickening with a little bit of pectin and lignin which are the material which gives its stability and it helps in the anther dehiscen dehiscen means the breakage or the breaking of the anther so that the pollen grains can get released into the atmosphere by different mediums the third layer will be known as middle layers now it ranges from 1 to 6 micron now this middle layer degenerates at the time of maturity of the anther so that the pollen grains can get released outside the body of an plant the last portion is known as tapetum which is known as the innermost layer of an anther wall which just surround the sporogenous tissue which is known as microspores or mother cells and provides the nutrition to the pollen grains so now let us discuss tapetum in detail the first portion in tapetum is it is basically the innermost layer of the anther wall which surround sporogenous tissue as we all know the second is it act as a nutritive medium for the sporogenesis or the sporo spores inside the anther now it has multinucleated and different types and sizes of cells and tapetum is divided basically into two the first is known as secretory or glandular phase and the second is known as amoeboid or periplasmoidal phase the first is known as secretory secretory or glandular is known as the tapetal cells remains in situ all through the development of microspore and finally they degenerate which means these kind of glandular or secretory stages all the tapetum remain inside only and ultimately after the development of microspores they all degenerate and just diminish the second is amoeboidal or periplasmoidal cells in these type of tapetal cells 
these break down the radial walls of release the protoplasm into the pollen chamber and these protoplasm fuse to form the prairie plasmodium now let us take the new topic which is known as microsporogenesis it is the formation and differentiation of microspore in the anther which is known as microsporogenesis what happens in this is all the primary mother cells which are present in the anther undergo succession a succession of meiosis and forms the ultimate tetrahedral tetrads these tetrads are basically of five types but the most common is known as tetrahedral structure now after every successful division or after every successful division of microspores mother cell is followed by the formation of cell wall outside it now in this topic that tetrad which has been produced will separate each other from these kind of tetrahedral arrangement and all the individual tetrad will be surrounded by double layered or two layer the outer one is known as exine and the inner one is known as intine which can be clearly seen in the left side diagram representation of a pollen grains now and what happens is these pollen grains which has been formed with the two layers outer one is known as exine and inner one is known as intine this is the first cell of male gametophyte now where does this nutrition comes is from the tapetum now at the time of the formation of pollen grains all the tapetum get used up and the anther become all dry so that it can liberate the pollen grains by dehiscence of the anther in families of asclepidae and orchidae these microspores are present in the form of pollenium and this what these pollenums are they are the masses of pollen grains present in each anther lobe as the pollenium is attached to the pollinating agent like insects the entire mass of pollen grains is transferred as a unit as a whole to another plant in this topic we will be talking about the detail about the pollen grains now what is the size what is the shape and what is the structure of the pollen grains we will be discussing in this topic the first is the pollen grains varies in different shapes and sizes and basically it has a size of 25 to 30 micrometer next is the pollen grains is haploid in structure unicellular structure with only single nucleus present and it has been divided into two layered now the cytoplasm present inside it is rich in starch and unsaturated oils the wall is consists of two parts the outer one is known as exine and the inner one is known as intine the outer one is made up of thick and is called exine and made up of a material known as sporopollenin now what is the sporopollenin it is a resistant material or a chemical and biological decomposition that preserves this pollen walls for longer period so that it can do and pollinate the other plants now exine in di is differentiated into different parts one is known as endexine and outer one is known as ectexine now intine, intine has been divided into different parts the first is inner wall is thin and is called as intine it is made up of two things one is the cellulose and pectis, pectin which gives it the stability and the structure now during pollination germination it is the intine that extend out from the pollen tube that means the tube which has been made in the pollen pistol interaction that tube will be made in the style with the help of these intine only and this cytoplasm will come out or extend out of the pollen tube and this initially uninucleates and later become two cell structure now there is an important topic which is known as palynology now what do you mean by palynology is it is the branch of study of only pollens that is called as palynology as we had a detailed study now let us discuss about how these pollen grains have been developed into a male gametophyte now what happens is the formation of tetrad has been completed in our previous topics we will continue from that the nucleus increase in size the tetrad that inside the tetrad the nucleus if we take a single tetrad its nucleus size get increases in the pollen grains it divide mitotically to produce two unequal daughters one is in a bigger size which is known as a vegetative cells which is also known as tube cells and a smaller one will be known as generative phase or also known as germ cell now what happens next is the pollination can occur when the pollen grains is two cell which means when it is in a stage of tube or in a generative phase it can pollinate or when it has three cell which means it has 
ट्यूब एंड टू मेल गेमेट्स विच मीन्स द जर्म सेल हैज बिन डिवाइड इन टू टू पार्ट्स इट कैन पोलिनेट एट दैट टाइम ऑल्सो द साइटोप्लाजम इज जनरेटिव सेल्स ड नॉट कंटेन मच ऑफ स्टोर्ड फूड नाउ एज द पोलन ग्रेन्स आर मच्योर्ड इनफ दे डज नॉट कंटेन एनी ऑफ द स्टोर्ड फूड मटेरियल नाउ नाउ नेक्स्ट इज फैट्स स्टार्च एंड पोल प्रोटीन्स ग्रेन्यूल्स आर प्रेजेंट इन वेजिटेटिव स्टेट एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिवाइडेड द माइक्रोस्पोर इन टू टू पार्ट्स वन इज वेजिटेटिव फेस एंड सेकेंड वन इज नोन एज जनरेटिव फेस जनरेटिव फेस डज नॉट हैव एनी फूड मटेरियल स्टोर्ड बट वेजिटेटिव फेज हैज सम काइंड ऑफ फैट स्टार्च एंड प्रोटीन मटेरियल इन इट एज यू कैन क्लियरली सी फ्रॉम द डायग्राम बिलो द टेट्रेड we have taken a single tetrad which is known as microspore that microspore has been divided into a bigger and a smaller portion the bigger one is known as vegetative and the smaller portion will be known as germ cell and these germ cell will again divide into two which is known as sperm cells at at last which will be known as a mature pollen the next topic is known as pollen products there are different kinds of products or the different kinds of things in the market the first one is known as pollen food supplement these kind of supplement are great or abundant in carbohydrate and unsaturated fat these are used in the form of tablets also and in the form of syrups also this enhance the vitality of the body and the functioning of the body so these type of pollen has been taken into consideration for the athletes and given to some races of the horses so that they can perform well and they can increase the vitality of their body the second is used in the pollen creams these pollen creams protect us from uv rays as these are used in creams emulsion of for providing smoothness and protection to the skin so these are also used in the beauticians or the cosmetic products also the next topic we'll be taking is the pollen viability now what does the viability means is how much time it will take to get deactivated or in other sense we can say that a period for which pollen grains remain viable or active or functional is called pollen viability now it depends on some of the criteria the first one is the temperature and the humidity the temperature and humidity plays a major role in the formation or in the viability of this pollen grains now pollen grains basically remains viable or active for 30 minutes and if we can conserve it the preservation technique is known as cryo preserved which is in a liquid nitrogen which has a temperature of 196 degrees celsius which has been used to preserve these kind of pollen grains in pollen brings the pollen allergy is also one of the major topics of this chapter which is the last topic of this video in this it causes severe allergy like in some of the organism or some of the humans it can even cause fever and common respiratory diseases such as asthma and bronchitis uh, there is an example of carrot grass known as parthenium hystrophus which is a major source of pollen energy allergy for many of the organism it causes harm to the internal body of the organs and it also introduced in india along with the different kind of imported wheat which we have produced or which we have taken from different countries that's it for today's video i hope you have understood the topics very well but for more understanding i, I urge all of you to repeat this video again for clearer understanding If you like the video and its content give it a thumbs up and don't forget to comment your name in the comment section if you are unable to understand or is struggling in any of the topic please write the topic in the comment section i'll sure surely try to get to you soon so for more of such videos stay tuned to the channel stay safe stay healthy and don't forget to learn it